Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Tonight, we're going to travel about as far north as we can travel, all the way up to Sonomish, Washington, where we find young late model driver Bryce Bizanson. Bryce, how are you doing this evening? Oh, I'm doing all right. Just been staying at home, trying to get some schoolwork done. You know, it's all online now, so not too much to do around here. So I know you guys are on quarantine, like most of the country is with this coronavirus going on. But I, but you did say you were doing schoolwork. Are you, are you actually attending virtual classes online? Uh, yeah, I was already doing a virtual school for the whole year. I only took uh, one or two classes each semester. But uh, so not too much has changed. But uh, it's just staying at home even more now. You know, I used to go into school, you know, once for a couple hours just to. Get some schoolwork to do and stuff, but now it's fully at home. It's, it's not too bad. Totally virtual. Yeah, I, I couldn't even imagine that. That that that's actually pretty cool. I would have liked that if, but uh, I'm not even sure they had the internet back when I was in high school. But we were talking a little bit before uh, we kind of went on about the distance between here and where you're at. We figure it's probably about three thousand miles. And I think you told me that your uncle once drove this without stopping like a like a long trip i mean that's uh that's a crazy trip to to travel that far i think you said what three and a half days to get there yeah yeah it took a while he, he may have stopped to, to sleep a few times but he uh he drove almost straight through and he's, he's he can do that stuff i i can imagine doing that a one bit yeah that's that's crazy i think maybe when i was in my 20s or 30s i might have tried that but uh I don't, I don't think I'd be, be attempting that at, at my age now. So what's been going on all winter? I know you've been doing a lot of, uh, a lot of simulator racing, but what else has been going on with Bryce? Oh, well, I was just about to start up golf season, which I was pretty pumped for. Uh, we got about a weekend, and unfortunately it got moved back a few months, and then it ended up getting canceled. So that's kind of a bummer. So I've just been you know staying home a lot, trying to, trying to go for runs, doing a lot of virus and trying to, you know, stay active through the coronavirus. And uh, I think I'm doing pretty good. It's actually kind of nice that I have this much free time. It's like I have an extra few hours every day to, to focus more on racing or to focus more on my fitness. I actually find it pretty nice. Yeah, because I know that you were doing some CrossFit training, but I'm gathering with the, with the quarantine that those gyms are probably shut down as well. Yeah, my CrossFit gym got shut down a few weeks ago, but uh, I remembered some of the stuff we did there. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to do most of what I did at CrossFit. It's kind of hard to match them sometimes, but I think I think it's going pretty good. I'm still staying pretty active. Right. So the question is, I know that that uh, you said the weather was pretty nice up there, like in the 60s. Are you able to get out to any of the golf courses? Because I know you're a big golfer. Are they are they shut down as well? Yeah, they, they got shut down about two days ago, which is a real bummer because that's what I did a lot. When whenever I got bored, I just go play golf. Or, and now I now I can't. Uh, I was able to get out a few days before they closed with my dad for his birthday, and that was really fun. We had a great time. It was like sixty two degree weather, which is kind of unheard of here too. It's usually it's pouring down rain until May, but it was great to get out then at least. But I, I think we'll be closed down for at least the next three, four weeks. Yeah, well, maybe you can, and not that I'm suggesting that you do this, but maybe you could sneak onto a course somewhere. Just don't start on the first tee. Go over like the third tee and play like three through 18, and maybe nobody will even know you're out there. Yeah, everyone's, everyone's quarantined, so I don't know why they check. <laughs> That's right. That's a good point. Because if they did come and check you, you could look at whoever was checking saying, what are you doing out here? You're supposed to be quarantined too. So you're as guilty as I am. Yeah. I, think that's, I think that sounds like a pretty good plan. Yeah, why not? Get a couple friends together. You know, what could go wrong? Now you get in trouble when you get a bunch of friends together. I was just suggesting you go out and play by yourself. Just, yeah. just practice time. So let's, uh, let's shift gears a little bit. Let's go from the golf course and let's, let's talk a little bit more about racing. 
um, you know, you're piloting the car for, uh, for Jeff Jefferson and Jefferson Racing, which is one of the top late model K&N teams. Um, ARCA, I mean, they get, they're, they're pretty much uh, involved in everything that's going on up in the Northeast and, or the Northwest, I should say. Sorry about that. Uh, so what's it like driving for Jeff Jefferson? It's great because uh, he's you know, off the track. It's just priceless, you know, all the information he can give me. You, know, you can tell he's been around this for, you know, decades. Like, uh, he's so experienced. He knows exactly what to tell me when I get off the track. You know, he's very straightforward. You know, if I'm doing something wrong, he's going he's gonna to let me know. And uh, I, it's just so great to be on that team. You know, they're, they're, they're number one. I'm just glad to be a part of them. Well, I'm not, I know, Jeff, that you're watching this, so I think he said decades. I think he just called you out. I think he just said you're really old. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. He's gonna, he might come talk to me after this. <laughs> yeah, I sure say he, that may cost you a little bit when you get back behind the car. But uh, I know that you're going to be running uh, a little bit different series than what you did last year. You're going to be visiting some new tracks. Is there a particular track that you're really looking forward to going out and visiting? Uh, yeah, uh, the Wenatchee Super Oval. Uh, I I ran one race on there, and I was just pretty fast throughout the whole race. Uh, I got a little, I got into a wreck about with about ten laps left, and that set me back in the field a little bit. But it's just such a fun track. Probably the nicest facility I've ever been to. All the people are really nice, and uh, it's it's kind of on like a on a massive hill too, so you can like overlook Wenatchee. And it's really pretty, a lot of nature. It's, a, it's just really cool. Right? I'm pretty excited to go back there. So a lot of people may not know, but I think I don't think that we at RaceFace have a driver that's excelled as fast as you have. I mean, you were basically racing quarter midgets, and then in two years later, you were ra basically running for you know Jefferson Pitts Racing at that time in the Wheelan All-American Series. Um, in a super late model, and that's advancing pretty fast. What's that been like? It, it's been it's been a it's been pretty hard. I'm not gonna lie. It's probably one of the hardest things I've done in my life. Actually, it is it's, it is the hardest thing I've done in my life because even the year before that, probably 80 percent of my races were on dirt. I I had a legend, but the engine blew up a few races in, and you know we didn't have the funding at that time to to fix it. So I ran about 25 dirt races, and then I tested with Jeff a few months later, and it went well. But throughout last season, it's just so much stuff to learn. Like, you know, on dirt, you don't have to worry about your tires. You can go up just hard the whole race. You're drifting around the corners. You know, you can you can maybe do that for about three laps in a late model, and then and the tires are shot. And uh, it's just been it's been a whole new concept that I've had to learn, but. Uh, Coming into this year, I think I got a lot of the basics down, and I think it's going to be a really great season. Now, you went and ran down in, in um, was it in Arizona uh, towards the oh, yeah, of beginning of this year? Yeah, in Tucson yeah. in uh, January. Yeah, it was a, it was a, a great experience. about that race. Yeah, it, was, it was a great experience. I think it's the second most cars I've raced against. There was a... Yeah, I think there's 27 cars down there, and uh, it's a really cool track because this is the first track I've ever been to that has multiple grooves. It has three grooves: the the low line, the middle line, which I ran, and then there's the third groove, which is way up, kind of near the wall. And uh, it was it was just fun, you know, exploring, kind of running the middle groove and even the high groove sometimes. And uh, it was just a, it's just a cool track. Uh, it's in a you know, it's obviously in Arizona, and there's like 70 degrees, which is which is which was nice to get to because we I think we were having a snowstorm at the time in Washington, so it was just cold and miserable. So I'm I'm really happy we we got to go up there, but I ended up getting 12. You know, I that's mostly on me. I maybe pushed it a little too hard, but uh, you know, great car. Uh, the Jefferson Racing just gave me an, an amazing car, and uh, it's great. But you ran in the top ten for that entire race, and I think at one time were you not up in the top five? 
Uh, yeah, I, I kind of, I, there was a big hole. A lot of cars were kind of slowing down in the start, so I saw gaps, kind of jumped it a little bit, and I got up into fourth place and uh, rode there for a while. I maybe, I maybe jumped up there a little too fast. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. You know, maybe I wasn't like, you know, just drifting the corners or anything, but I was, I was on it. No, it costed me a little bit towards the end of the first half of the race because uh, it was a 150 lap race and 75 laps through. You pull on and get new tires. So uh, my tires were pretty shot after the 75 laps. I, I ended up falling back to. Yeah, I think it was like 21st. But uh, we tightened the car up, got new tires on, you know, going out there. I thought of a new strategy, you know, just wide around for the first 20 laps. And uh, it ended up working and gained nine positions back. And uh, unfortunately, I was I was in the lucky dog position for about 50 laps. But I never, I never there's there's only one caution in that whole time period, there was just unheard of there. You know, 25 cars on the track, it was, it was crazy. So a little bit of a little bit of unfortunate luck, but for the most part, it went yeah. pretty good. Well, and you were probably racing against some of the best competition that you've ever raced in against in your career. Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd say it's almost even more competition than that summer showdown that I raced in in June. Like, there is, you know, Preston Pelt here and just a lot of other well heard of drivers including even the local drivers down in tucson they, they know how to race there it's a, a lot of school drivers there well one of the things that you're going to have to learn and you can go on youtube and watch a lot of videos you're going to have to have that water bottle in your car so you can kind of slip it out the window net to bring that caution out when you need one just don't <laughs> get caught <laughs> yeah i don't know how well that would go if i got caught yeah, well, I mean, people, they, they do it all the time. But, but the, you know, what you did bring up was that you had a great run there. Um, I, I would say probably has to rate up there as one of your top performances. And, um, you know, you brought the car home in one piece, again, against tough, tough competition. So I, I think that you had to be kind of geared up and just be like, man, I cannot wait for the, the season to get started. And now we kind of got this this uh, quarantine going on and nobody's racing anywhere in the country. Um, how do you think that's going to play once uh, in, into your hand once racing does resume? Yeah, well, coming out of that race, it gave me, it gave me a lot of confidence because I was kind of coming off a tougher season and going to that race and running with all the people that I ran with because, you know, they're, they're really good. Yeah, they're super good. Like, man, they're some of them are crazy here. I, I think some of them, they had the funding, they could go to Cup Series. Like, they're, they're good. And I was just really happy to run with them and, you know, not get destroyed. And it, it, gave, me a, it gave me a lot of motivation coming into the season. It kind of showed me what I was capable of, you know. And I'm also in a, on a great team, Jefferson Racing. I know they're going to take care of me, you know, get me through the season. And uh, I was excited to see what it has to hold for me. Uh, fortunately, it's going to get suspended for probably a couple months because of, of what's going on. But, you know, when we get resumed back in June, July, you know, I'll be, I'll be as ready as I can and uh, just can't wait. Well, Bryce, um, I, I think you, you said a very key word in there, your confidence level. Uh, there's nothing more important than a, good, a driver having a lot of confidence in what he's been able to do, having a lot of confidence in his team, his crew chief, his spotter. And I think you're in a great position. So I really want to thank you for, for being on uh, the Spotlight interview with us tonight. Uh, is there any of your sponsors you'd like to give a shout out? Uh, yes, yes, there is. I'd like to you know, just shout out my partnership in the Friends of Jackson Foundation. Uh, I partnered with them a few months ago and I adopted someone from there, like I adopted a child, like some sports teams that Friends of Jackson adopts. and. Uh, it's been a really priceless experience, and I'm um, glad to you know, wear the badge on my car. I'd like to thank Racecraft One uh, for just giving me some great training. And, uh, yeah, that's all I got. All right. Well, very good. If you want to follow and get connected with Bryce Bizanson, go to BryceBizansonRacing.com. Once you're on his website, you can check out his Facebook, 
his Twitter, his Instagram accounts. And while you're there, go over and check out Racing for a Cause and see exactly what Bryce has been involved with with the Friends of Jackman. And if you want to help support them, you can even do that as well. So Bryce, again, thanks for being with us. We're going to look forward to you getting back behind the wheel, hopefully in June. And I think you're going to have a great race season. So thanks again for being with us. Thank you. So everybody, there you had it. Bryce Bizantz in Sonoma, Washington. As always, if you've missed any of our episodes, you can catch up at raceface.tv on demand. Again, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you back here on our next Raceface Spotlight.